Well, hi guys. Thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry. As you might imagine, I talk to woodworkers and carpenters from the world over, and three of the things that are in most demand by the audience for this channel are number one, a board stretcher, number two, a sky hook, and number three are aluminum magnets. Viewers that are familiar with the Next Level Carpentry channel have probably seen the BS1000 board stretcher video that I produced a couple years back. And I'm still trying to work out particulars for those aluminum magnets, but I can show you in this video how I install a skyhook in the Next Level Carpentry shop. As you can imagine, skyhook placement, strength, and design is going to vary from shop to shop, and that depends on the type of structure, the strength of the structure, and the configuration of the framing in the structure. But an essential part of any skyhook is naturally the hook itself. And for the skyhook in the Next Level Carpentry shop, I'm using this large eye bolt. This is three quarter inch steel bent into an eye, and it's got uh, threads on the top uh, for nuts, and the length of this is 12 inches. And while a heavy eye bolt like that is a key feature of any skyhook, securing and attaching the bolt is going to vary widely from shop to shop, structure to structure. But for the next level carpentry shop, I'm using this piece of three inch steel channel, quarter inch thick, to distribute the load that's placed on the sky hook. And I'm thankful that that piece of hardware will get the job done for this installation because it keeps it simple. Uh, my installation also includes this, which is a sky hook guide or spacer block, and then a simple block that helps support the skyhook anchoring channel. So those components, along with a couple of screws for hardware and a basic set of tools, are pretty much what's involved for installing two of these skyhooks in the Next Level Carpentry Shop. Because I'm neither lawyer or engineer, I'm not offering guidance or advice for skyhooks in any other applications. But I hope you'll see in this video that with a little bit of engineering and some forethought, having a functional, useful skyhook in your shop is a real possibility. I've got years of experience in the building and construction trades so that I understand the type of structure, the nature of the structure above the ceiling here in the shop, and I'm confident of its strength and my application of this hardware to provide me with a skyhook with a working strength I'm comfortable at 500 pounds. Lacking experience or judgment or maybe boldness, anyone can consult an engineer and come up with a design, a system, and the right hardware for installing a safe and reliable and useful skyhook in their shop or workspace. But to avoid going too deep down that rabbit hole, I'm just going to show you what this installation looks like to get the gears turning to see if installing a skyhook in your shop is a worthwhile endeavor. Naturally, the first step in any skyhook installation is determining the location. I've got an area here that's central to the shop so that I can move things into the space under the skyhook and lift and lower as I see fit. I also happen to know that there's a double girder roof truss right over my head here that I'm confident is more than adequate for supporting the loads that I intend to pick up with this hook. But even with knowledge of the structure and its strength, I still need a location so I know where to drill a hole through the ceiling. And to do that, I use my carpenter's superpower, which involves driving a small wire down from the attic alongside the roof truss to transfer the location from up there to down here. I brought the camera up into the attic just above where I was standing in the shop so that you can see this double girder truss that I was talking about. It's got a two by six bottom cord, gusset plates, etc. And this location is only about six feet from the eave and the wall this truss sits on. So not only is this a strong double truss, it's in a favorable location near the end of the truss where it's able to support more weight. I could use a tape measure to try to figure out this location, but I'd much rather use the carpenter's superpower to locate this face of the truss in the ceiling down below. You can learn more about this technique if you click the link in the upper right hand corner of your screen right now. But basically, I've got a piece of thin music wire chucked in a drill. It has a sharpened tip. And to transfer the location of this face of this cord of the truss to the ceiling down below, I merely put the wire next to the 2x6 bottom cord turn the drill on and give it a push. And just like that, I'll be able to see this exact location on the ceiling below. And I'll take the camera back down there to show you what I mean. Well, it's a sunny afternoon in June, and I don't want to spend any more time in that attic than I have to, so I'm thankful for that carpenter superpower that allows me to precisely locate that 
Girder Trust and eliminate all the guesswork of measuring and calculating to determine the location. And it's going to be a little bit difficult to see, but just up here is where that wire is sticking out. This is going to be kind of tricky to see both me and the wire in this shot, but I'm standing on a stool to show you if this is where the wire is. I hope you can see that in this shot. And so what that tells me is that the bottom cord of that double truss is to this side of the wire, between the wire and the back wall of the shop. And I know that it runs parallel to that back wall. So the next thing I need to do is to determine how far from the sidewall I want to be and then measure out that same distance. And if you look close right here, you can see there's already a hole in the ceiling to make sure this whole thing was going to work before I started shooting the video. But the location process started by poking that wire through and then measuring down here to end up with the location. Because I'm going to be using this little spacer guide block, when I install the eye bolt, I made sure to space that hole this distance away from the face of the truss. So this will get screwed up against the face of the truss and the eye bolt will come up through that hole. Hope that all makes sense. So that's the simple sequence I use for determining exactly where the skyhook is going to be located in the ceiling of the shop. And once I've determined the exact point, I take a three quarter inch hole saw in a drill and drill up through the ceiling sheetrock for a nice clean fit of the skyhook. With the location and drilling complete, I can take the skyhook support channel along with the other hardware and blocks back up into that hot attic and show you what this installation process looks like. And here's what my trip up into that attic looks like going past the extension cord organizer that hangs from the ceiling and on up into the attic space where I'll be installing the skyhook support bracket back in that corner. And later you'll see that there's another skyhook bracket over in this area that I installed previously, but very nice clean attic, even though it's hot. Great feature is that there's a, a light switch here for lights that were installed in the attic. And you'll get a kick out of the uh, headlamp I'm wearing. Here's what it looks like. It's a LED headband. Pretty nice deal here. It's got three speeds. And you can see why I call this a Bluetooth headlamp, right? There's my blue teeth. Hi guys, I'm shooting video in the attic. <laughs> All kidding aside, you can see why this is a pretty sweet headlamp on the high power. Gives me a lot of illumination everywhere I'm working. And it's a great backup for the uh, lights that are installed in this attic. But there is the other um, skyhook support bracket that's installed in the front of the shop. But we're going back here to get this one installed. So I'm set up in this work area and right there you can see the three quarter inch hole that was located from up here and drilled from down below. And now I'll switch back to the other camera for the install. Well here you can see the work area. I brought a piece of plywood up as a staging area for all the pieces parts so they don't get lost in that insulation. And for reference, here's the hole uh, that the skyhook will come up through later. This is the skyhook support channel. It's just a block, a two by four, with a three quarter by three quarter dado plowed through it. And I'll use that just as a guide to keep the skyhook from swiveling in use so it'll support it nicely. And I lowered the top of the block so that I can put a nut and a washer on top of that and tighten it up against the bottom of the channel but it won't interfere. The channel will be resting firmly on the top of the double girder truss on this side so the block is lower so that nut and washer don't get in the way. You'll see how that goes in a bit. But for now I'm just going to drive these two Torx drive screws into the bottom cord of the truss after lining the block up on the three quarter inch hole from down below. Easy peasy. Notice that I drive and redrive those screws to eliminate the screw jacking and keep the block tight against the bottom cord of the truss. Now that that piece is in place, I need to install this two inch block on this other truss over here. 
that you can barely see in the camera, but this is two inches and it makes up the difference between the five and a half inch bottom cord of this girder truss and the three and a half inch bottom cord on the regular truss. But I want to have this block centered up across from here, so I brought a framing square up. And I can just center that mark up across here for reference. And I'll draw the center mark up here while I'm at it. And now I'll just line up the center mark on the block with the center mark on the cord of the truss to attach this support block where it goes centered up across from the sky. So now the top of this block is level with the bottom cord of the girder truss over here. So here is the skyhook support channel that I made and I'll take a little sidebar here and show you that I cut this piece of three inch wide quarter inch thick steel channel to length using an evolution metal cutting chop saw which is an amazing machine. First cutting it to length and then trimming the sharp ears off it. Once that was done I went to the drill press and drilled the three quarter inch hole through the bottom web in the right location and also drilled two quarter inch holes that I'll use for securing the support channel to the bottom cord of these trusses. Once I had the piece cut and drilled, I used a flap disc to take off all the sharp edges, followed by a full coat of primer, which I scuffed down before applying a heavy coat of caution yellow paint to the skyhook support channel. I made and painted the channel several days ago, so the paint is good and dry now, and all it takes to attach it firmly in place is to line up the quarter inch holes on the center lines I drew just a little bit ago with a framing square, where I'll secure it forever and always with a couple of quarter inch diameter hex head cap lines. And for this application, where there's absolutely no stress at all on the bolts that hold this channel down, these short but sturdy tap guns are more than adequate for the job. And to explain a little bit of the engineering that went into this, I'm using the channel in this orientation to minimize extra length on the skyhook bolt because the quarter inch steel on the bottom of the channel is more than strong enough to keep the bolt from pulling down. And I have put the load point right next to this girder truss to eliminate the chance of the channel kinking under load like it might if I was loading it out in the middle of the channel. So that's what the skyhook support channel looks like when it's installed. But I'll remove it now as I go back downstairs and slip the skyhook up through that hole so that I can come back and put the nuts, washers, and jam nuts on the end of the bolt to hold it in place forever and always. And here I go back downstairs again. And man, I'm going to tell you it is warm up in that attic this afternoon. But uh, here you get a better look at what my Bluetooth headlamp looks like. A uh, long press shuts it off, but it's a nice compact deal. Plenty of light, it's really even light, not a lot of shadows for working. So that is quite nice. Uh, but I am ready to slip the skyhook up into its uh, permanent home. I'll show you a couple things. One is the underside of this washer. I put double stick tape on it because I want it to stick to the ceiling and it act like a little trim ring. And the other thing is, I put a black line on the end of the bolt that lines up with the hook so I know when the hook is going this direction in the shop, which is how I want it to end up. But up the ladder I go and I head up into the backlit zone here at the ceiling and just slide this into place. Now this is going through that guide block up in the attic. It's kind of a snug fit, which I'm <coughs> coughing dust and insulation, but this is kind of a snug fit, which is what I want because Chip's not here to hold it and I need to start a nut on top of that so it doesn't fall back through and hopefully it doesn't beam me in the head in the process. All right, and here I am again back in the work zone and the bolt did not fall down, which I'm thankful for. So I can get that nut started and not give anybody down below a headache. I'm running this nut far enough down so that I can put a washer on it, the channel, a washer, and jam nuts on the top and have this come out about flush. So that's pretty good. I'll raise this up just a little bit more, which I can do like that. It'll give me threads above that top jam nut. Now I just line this little mark up here so that the eye hook is running straight in the shop front to back. And I'll drop that washer on there, slip this into place. And then I can redrive the tap cons to hold it where it belongs. Just like that. Just gotta love it when a plan comes together. So I'm adding another three quarter inch washer on there and these jam nuts. 
there's enough sticking up there so I can reach underneath and tighten this nut. I'm actually just readjusting that. It's a little tricky to do in cramped quarters. That's a good height. Looks like I brought up my metric crescent wrench, so this isn't working so well, but I'll make do. And all I'm doing here is working those nuts back and forth so that they pinch this channel nice and firm that'll hold that skyhook rigid down below. And I'll use a second wrench to get that where it needs to be. So I was just working to get the two nuts tight, pinching that channel so that that line goes straight front to back so the hook will look nice in the shop down below. And now I can tighten up the second jam nut or tighten up the jam nut on top here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the completed skyhook installation for the next level carpentry shop looks like. Once I've done a thorough test of the skyhook, I'll come back up in the attic and roll all this insulation back in place to cover this up for the hot summer and cold winter weather that awaits. And I, for one, don't mind telling you that I'm glad that part is over with. Whew. But the last little detail here is to take the dust away from the, the hole there in the ceiling and peel the backing off this double stick tape, which is not going to be easy. But as usual, persistence wins the day. And I'm left with a nice, clean, solid install of a skyhook at the west end of the Next Level Carpentry Shop ceiling. And I'm excited to demonstrate the awesomeness of this brand new skyhook as I set up rigging to make its maiden pick. I start out with a nylon strap rated at 5,000 pounds cinched into the eye hook, followed by a come along rated at 2,000 pounds that supplies the muscle for actually making the pick. Well, with all the rigging set up here, I'm ready to make the maiden pick with the West Skyhook and the Next Level Carpentry Shop. And I've got a carton here that I know for a fact weighs over 400 pounds, which is plenty close to the 500 pound capacity that I want and expect out of this Skyhook. The labeling on the carton shows that this is 413.6 pounds plus a pallet and chains. So I'm guessing this is approaching 450, which in my mind, is an adequate test for the strength of this brand new Skyhook. And anybody that knows anything about producing content for YouTube knows that I'm painting a huge red target on my back by creating a video like this that's bound to draw the attention of trolls and armchair engineers who've got nothing better to do than deride content producers who venture anywhere outside the box and especially venturing far outside the box by creating something as radical as a Skyhook attached to the ceiling of a shop. And being completely aware of that reality, I made this video anyways for the rest of the viewers out there who understand that some people actually function in the real world where projects of an unusual nature like this can be very beneficial. So everything's set up here. And as you'd expect, I did a test pick of this just to make sure everything lines up in this carton list evenly. But for skeptics, naysayers and trolls, I actually installed a deflection gauge here that's attached to the bottom cord of the same roof truss that supports the sky hook, only it's farther out in the span of the truss. So any deflection here would be amplified here. And this deflection gauge is nothing more than a one by two that's screwed to the ceiling, loosely clamped to another one by two that sits on the floor. And when I tap this piece down to make sure it's tight to the floor in a set position, any movement or deflection in the truss will shift these two sticks and that deflection will be clearly visible in misalignment of the pencil mark that's drawn across the edges of these two pieces. And it would look something like this. So I'll restore this deflection gauge to the neutral position before lifting the 450 pound crate. So that now the only thing I'm waiting for is a drum roll as I hoist this 450 pound crate with a sky hook. And I've lifted it to this height 
just to prove a point and to demonstrate the usefulness of the skyhook. But in reality, all I would need to do for lifting this crate was just put it on or take it off those rolling carts to move it around the shop. As an example of the use, function, and purpose of having a skyhook. And in this shot, with that 450 pound crate dangling from the brand new skyhook, you can see that the deflection gauge reads zero. And I'd be comfortable with this setup, seeing how all this works at approaching a thousand pounds. So it's going to be more than adequate to pick up anything here in the shop. I'm not pulling engines, I'm not lifting vehicles, etc. But the strength of the system is now focused on the eye hook itself. That's a bent steel eye hook. It's not a welded loop. By putting a welded loop up there and for a very heavy pick, I could put a support column over here so that the span of that double girder truss was limited to, oh, less than 12 feet. I wouldn't be afraid to lift a ton with that. And I don't want to give the wrong impression to anyone that decides to put a sky hook in their shop or workspace. This has potential danger here. If you're not paying attention, something goes wrong, you overlook something. Those are all possibilities. If there's an inherent weakness in the design or the setup of your sky hook, uh, you could have a disaster. So I don't want to be cavalier about it, but on the other hand, I don't want to be Mr. Paranoia because you can clearly see here what's possible when it comes to designing, creating, and installing a sky hook for your workspace. And as Chip lowers the crate back onto the carts so I can move it across the shop, I'll ask viewers to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and this type of content. And if you want to be one of the first to know when new videos like this are released, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and you'll be notified each time a new video is uploaded to the channel. Videos like this don't necessarily fit into the YouTube algorithm so well, but you can help support the channel by following links in the video description to various suppliers like Amazon, Teespring, and most importantly, Patreon. For anyone interested in becoming a patron to the channel, there's a link to Patreon in the video description. And as an active patron, you have access to a growing library of behind the scenes in-depth content from Next Level Carpentry. And as an example, patrons were treated to a preview of the Skyhook installation in a recent patron-only video, plus in-depth content about design, fabrication, etc. So if you're interested in more in-depth information from this and other projects, or just for supporting me and the Next Level Carpentry channel, consider signing up as a patron, where I always appreciate the extra dialogue and support from new and long-term patrons. Observant viewers would notice by the label on that carton that there's a new Powermatic drill press in there, and I'm excited to do an unboxing and setup of that drill press and at the same time talk about and introduce a new affiliate partnership that I've set up here for Next Level Carpentry that I think will be a great benefit to myself, to the channel, and to viewers and subscribers. So stay tuned for that video. And now with the carton firmly back on those carts and ready to transport, I'll join Chip by saying, as always and until next time, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Wow, like, OMG, am I seriously so totally transparent that you're still here watching at the end of the end of the end of this video? Well, I think you're going to be glad you stuck around this time, because after spending long hours and late nights in the Next Level Carpentry Laboratory, I think you're going to be excited to see what I've invented. Even though the solution in this thin ceramic bowl looks remarkably like sparkle glass cleaner, what it is is actually an aluminum magnet solution. You'll notice when I test the solution with the probes from the magnetometer, I don't get a reading whatsoever. But when I take a regular magnet and soak it in that solution, swirl it around for just a few seconds to let the magnet attract the aluminum magnet ions out of the solution, you can see that when I extend the magnet after soaking it in that solution for just a few seconds, the needle on the magnetometer goes off the scale, which is amazing from such a short treatment. And now this ordinary magnet is capable of attracting even thin aluminum as demonstrated in these pop cans. Look at that bond. That is clearly a strong magnetic attraction to aluminum.
and it works on any neodymium magnet. Here's another cylindrical magnet that I got. And look at the hole that I get on this aluminum can. It's just remarkable, folks. It holds cans together. And that is after just a quick soak in this aluminum magnetic solution. And take note that I get that kind of magnetic attraction after just a short dip into that solution. The solution is good for dozens of magnets in hundreds of applications. And by tweaking the chemistry in the magnetic solution, I've got it formulated so that it not only works on aluminum, but it works on aluminium and aluminium, as well as aluminium. Alun aluminum. So for any of these non-ferrous alumina aluminatic materials, this solution is your solution for magnets that attract aluminum. Naturally, as you'd expect, I'll include links to gallon jugs of this solution that you can buy exclusively from the Next Level Carpentry channel here on YouTube. So check out those links, get your solution, and amaze your friends with your very own aluminum magnets. Now, aren't you glad that you watched this video to the end of the end of the end? Well, I am.